Oh boy, it's another week of, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Yes, boys and girls, another week of a great Bible story. That sounds a little crazy, but boys and girls, it's true. And we're going to start right out with Skittles to find out what's up this week. But before we do, let's open up with a word of prayer. I'm Miss Donna, and I am so happy to be with you today. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much that you are God. You have created every single thing, person, place that we see. Lord, thank you so much for loving each one of us. I pray, Lord, that we would do our best to give you honor, glory, and praise, Lord that you so well deserve. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I pray for these boys and girls in Jesus' name. Amen, boys and girls. So let's get started with What's Up? 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 Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are learning a lesson about how we need to say no to pride. Just say no. No! So anytime today that somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I will choose to stay humble and say no to pride. Pride stinks. It'll mess you up. So we got to stay humble and say no to pride, baby. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. I will choose to stay humble and say no to pride, and that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skill out, baby. Yeah. All right, so boys and girls, what's up? I will choose to stay humble and say no to pride. Let's say it again. I will choose to stay humble and say no to pride. That's right, boys and girls. That is our what's up for today. Today you may think, what? Miss Donna, cows? Well, this cow or a cow plays a very important role in our Bible story today. Boys and girls, Miss Donna loves cows. I grew up on a farm where there were plenty of cows. My dad was a farmer and I just fell in love with that face. How can you not? But would I ever want to be a cow? Mm, I don't think so. So let's go on and find out what is a cow doing in God's word. Let's listen. I know it sounds crazy, but if pigs could fly, other pigs couldn't see it because pigs can't look up. I know it sounds crazy, but horses have bigger eyes than any other mammal on land, even you. I know it sounds crazy, but a rabbit's front two teeth never stop growing. The only way for them to not get too long is for them to just keep chewing. I know it sounds crazy, but cows spend six to eight hours eating each day. I know it sounds crazy, but humans would have to eat 360 cheeseburgers and drink 400 to 800 glasses of water to eat like cows each day. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. It's all true. You're ready to learn about something even crazier today on... I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Crazy, but it's true, very true. It's a story about 
life. He thought he was the one who was responsible for making all the good things that happened in his life. What he forgot was that God owns everything. And he is the one that decides who he blesses and who he doesn't. Today, we're going to learn what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar after he decided to milk his bride for all it's worth. <laughs> and, and, and he decided to move. Fine. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar had decided to move on and learn the lesson that God had for him that day. What lesson is that, you ask? Well, that's the lesson that you're going to learn today in your lesson. Hey, kids, what goes ooh? A cow with no lips. boys and girls know a lot is really crazy isn't he well I'm excited to tell you about the story in God's Word Daniel chapter 4 you can get your Bibles out and follow along if you want it is a story about Nebuchadnezzar you know boys and girls it's a really wild story today one that's hard to believe and it doesn't get told very often now, you may have never heard it before, or you may have heard it, but that's okay. We're going to go through it now. This story, like I said, is from the book of Daniel, and it's a story about King Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler of the entire country of Babylon. He was the most powerful man in the world at that time. The problem is he believed that he had done everything all on his own. He was very prideful, boys and girls. But one night, God gave him a dream, and the king just couldn't understand it. And it totally freaked him out. And so he called on Daniel to interpret what that dream meant. Now, Daniel was a man of God. And he told the king what the dream meant. He said that if Nebuchadnezzar didn't turn away from his pride, repent of his pride, then God was going to drive him away into the wilderness where he would live with the wild animals. Oh my goodness. Well, the king didn't listen very well. No, boys and girls, he didn't. As a matter of fact, he walked out onto his porch, looked over the city of Babylon, and he said to himself, Just look at this amazing city that I built with my own power, so all will know my splendor. Ah, oh, wow. That sounds pretty prideful, huh? Well, the moment he started bragging on himself, God spoke to him from heaven. And he said, Nebuchadnezzar, I am making good on my promise. Your royal authority is now going to be stripped from you. You will be driven away from your people and you will eat grass with the cows. <gasps> Boys and girls, eat grass with the cows? Oh my goodness. Whoa, talk about pride goes before destruction. That's bad. The Bible said that King Nebuchadnezzar ate, slept, and lived with the cows for seven years. Seven years, boys and girls. He ended up looking like a wild creature. Well, seven years passed and the king continued living as a cow. Suddenly, 
one day, he came to his senses. He looked up to heaven and began to praise God. He honored God for all God had done for him. He admitted that God was the reason he had anything at all. He was finally letting go of his pride, boys and girls, and giving God the honor and praise. At that moment, God restored his sanity and gave him back his life, his throne, and his kingdom, boys and girls. King Nebuchadnezzar continued to praise God and give him glory. And he told everyone that God was the reason for his great kingdom. Boys and girls, in our lesson today, you and I are going to learn how to avoid proud cow disease. Let's look at what God's word says after we hear from our favorite librarian. Oh, I'm sorry, boys and girls, I don't have it up here. Well, then we'll just look at God's word. And it's in Proverbs 16, 18, and it says, Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. That's God's warning to us that if we brag, if we say, oh, I did this, I did that, look how good I am, that's pride. And it goes before a downfall. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, he bragged and he bragged and he bragged, but he didn't brag on God, he bragged on himself. And what happened? He was destroyed and became a cow or like a cow. And haughtiness, haughtiness is another way of being proud and bragging on yourself. Before a fall, before being destroyed. Boys and girls, that's God's warning to us. Now, as we go on here, we're going to talk about proud cow disease. Now, today we learned about what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar when he became full of pride. He ended up living a horrible life, and it was among the cows, eating grass. He didn't have to go through it if he would have only kept himself from giving in to pride. He stood on the walls of his city and said, this is Babylon. Look how great I've made it. Look how I have done all these great things. Well, boys and girls, he was not the one that did that. No, not only did he have help, but who gave him the breath that he was breathing? Who gives you the breath that you're breathing or me, the breath I'm breathing? God does. That's right. Who gave him the strength? Who gives you strength? Who gives me strength? God does. And boys and girls, he forgot that, you know, without God, he wouldn't even have been born. No, God blessed him with life. God blessed you with life. He blessed me with life. It's only right that we say thank you and praise you, Lord, for what you're doing through us. And remember, boys and girls, we can become so full of ourselves and full of pride that we forget that all of our talents, our skills, our abilities, and our brains come from God. God is the one who makes you maybe the best football player out of all the players or you're bragging if you say, I'm the best. Well, no, God made you what you are, not you. You didn't have anything to do with it except play the game. Oh, uh, when you say, I'm the best singer of all, you're bragging on yourself, not God. That's pride, and pride causes some big time damage in our lives. Boys and girls, remember 
You can't do anything without God. You can't. You're going to, it will be destroyed. God deserves the credit for everything. Everything, boys and girls, God deserves the credit. If we allow pride to come in, we can suffer through a lot of pain. And one of the biggest things that can happen to us is the same thing that happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Well, not the fact that he lived with the cows, but the fact that he completely lost everything that he was prideful about. And be careful, boys and girls, because you may lose the very thing that you are prideful about. Nebuchadnezzar was proud about his kingdom, so his kingdom was taken away from him. Kids, God knows the kind of damage that pride can do in our lives. He will do whatever it takes to keep us from pride. He will take away whatever it is that is causing us to be prideful. That's how much God loves you and wants to keep us from letting pride take control of our lives. Maybe you're here today listening and you realize that you have allowed pride to creep into your life. Maybe you've forgotten that you can't do anything without God. What do you need to do? Well, you need to do exactly what King Nebuchadnezzar did. He came to his senses. You need to come to your senses, boys and girls. You need to look up to heaven and praise God for all that he has done for you and all that he's allowing you to do. Nebuchadnezzar honored God finally for all he had done for him. He admitted that God was the reason he had anything at all. And you know, boys and girls, at that moment, God restored his sanity, gave him back his life, his throne, his kingdom. He gave him back everything. King Nebuchadnezzar continued to praise God and give glory. He had conquered pride in his life. Kids, if you want to destroy pride in your life, look to God and give him glory. Don't brag on yourself, brag on God. Yes, if you've been dealing with pride, stop bragging on yourself. Start bragging on God. After all, he is the reason you are who you are. He created you. He loves you. He sent his son Jesus to die for you and rise again. Boys and girls, give him the credit. I'm going to pray right now and just thank God for who he created you to be. Oh God, thank you so much for how you created each one of us, for who you've made each one of us to be. God, I pray that we would get rid of our pride, that we would give you honor and glory and the credit, Lord, for all that is going on in our lives because we can't do anything without you. You need to get all the honor, glory, and praise. God, I pray for those who have never said, Lord, I know you love me. I know, Jesus, you died on the cross and rose again for me. And I choose you to be the boss of my life. Lord, I pray that boys and girls that are listening to this and moms and dads and aunts and uncles will turn away from their pride, turn away from their sin and choose you to be the boss of their life. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, if you watch this Bible lesson today and you want some of the information that I have, like the proud cow disease handouts and the family devotion. If you can just have mom or dad just put a message on this, comment on it, please send me something. I would be more than happy to do that. You have a great day. And remember, God loves you. God created you. Let's give him the praise. Bye-bye, guys. See you next week.